In this video, I'm excited to share with you a fantastic type of watercolor I've recently discovered – staining watercolors. I'm not sure if they're known by this name everywhere or if they go by different names. My friend Maria actually introduced me to them. I got mine from Schminke, but you can find them from other brands as well. Schminke indicated them with a black triangle. And what's unique about them is that once you apply them on your paper, they remain there and can't be easily removed. So why is this special? Because it allows you to layer your watercolor in beautiful ways. My watercolor technique often involves layering and glazing small pieces of brush strokes, like the ones shown here. Here on the hand, for example, you can see how all the different little watercolor layers are placed on top of each other without resolving the underlaying paint. For example, this beautiful shape here, I put down first and then I put this layer on top here. And this layer beneath didn't get resolved at all. And this happened with all the shapes in the painting. Here in the hair, for example, I first painted the darker areas and then I painted with lighter watercolors on top. And usually the thing that happens is that the watercolor beneath that is getting resolved and everything smudges. And this is actually the main reason how watercolor smudges and blotchy paints are actually happening because of underlying paint that is resolved. And the staining watercolors are preventing that. Now, before we continue, I wanted to let you know that there are only about two weeks left to join my live painting class, Paint Like the Greats. In this four-week online course, you will paint an enchanting Art Nouveau masterpiece with the intricate and decorative style elements of Alphonse Mucha. Throughout the course, I will guide you step-by-step, step, give you tips, and you will get lifetime access to the recordings. You will also get personal feedback at the end of the class in our popular critique session, and during the course, you can share your work with our group group of enthusiastic students. On top of that, you get access to two bonus videos that teach you how you can use AI and a graphic program such as Photoshop to create fantastic references for your art. I offer these courses only a few times per year, so don't miss out on this chance to level up your painting skills. To learn more, just follow the link on the screen or in the video description. So I wanted to show you how it looks with regular watercolors and staining watercolors. I just want to paint an eye or something. Let's start with the staining watercolors. I will just clean the brush because the staining watercolors are actually influencing the regular watercolors as well. If you mix them with regular ones, the regular ones also get this uh, staining ability so they don't get off the paper as well. Okay, now I've painted two super ugly eyes. Let's say I give them a yellow tint. Okay, and now what you see is this is not nice, obviously. No one wants that. I'm going to do the same with the staining watercolors. Can you see the difference? Oh my God, guys, isn't this amazing? <laughs> I actually wasn't sure if it would be that crazy. I didn't plan this video. Isn't that crazy? You see how ugly this smudged? And can you also see the little ugly like blots and dots there and how clear and crisp this is? This is chef's skills, guys. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm not sure if you guys know, but those of you who followed me for a long time on YouTube, I worked with Fabriano paper back in the days because on Fabriano paper, I would always get this result. But at some point, Fabriano changed their recipe. Mind you, I didn't change the watercolors. I just worked on the paper. And after a while, I got this result. And I was like, what was happening? Why did I get from this to that? And this was because Fabriano changed their color lifting ability of the paper. So the coat which they coated their paper, they probably changed that. Modern watercolor papers, most of them have a very very strong color lifting ability. If you're a beginner and you want to correct mistakes, you can better work with something like that, where you can just rub the color off, than with something like that, where once it's in the paper, it's always there, it doesn't get off at all. However, <laughs> even as a beginner, I like this more because this is always ugly. <laughs> so I just find working with staining watercolors or with staining paper, like however you want to call it, way easier even as a beginner than this one. So for me, it might be different depending on the subject. For example, if I would paint a cloudy sky, then something like that might be better because I have more room for correction. And if it gets a bit muddy, it's not that bad because there's a tree having this texture. I think it's okay. But if you paint portraits or figures, this is really horrible because you don't want to have 
have that in your portrait. I'm very excited because now I can try to work on my favorite paper, which is Fabriano again. But to be honest with you guys, this is my newest paper, which is Hahnemühle the Collection. And it's very similar to the Fabriano paper. So I might do a comparison between the two sometime and see if there is a difference. But I just wanted to show you the two different watercolor types and how amazing it is. And um, it's interesting for me because I always learn something new. Even if I've painted with watercolors for the last, I don't know, seven years, <laughs> there's always something new that I learn and I find it very exciting. And my friend Maria, who actually discovered this, she discovered it first on Laovan's channel. I actually met him on the Dukomi a few weeks ago. It's not that I watch like every of his YouTube videos, <laughs> but I should have because then I would probably know the staining watercolor type by now. But anyways, I'm excited. And the cool thing is I learned to work with the regular watercolors on regular watercolor paper. So it's not that it's impossible, actually. I had to adapt my technique, even made a few Patreon videos <laughs> about this, how you can avoid blotching colors like the one you just saw me doing with the eye here. So how you can avoid this and have more results like this, because it's possible. You just have to be more careful. I can work very fast when I know that the color is not coming off the paper, which is great. So the good thing is now I have even more possibilities to work with the color. I can decide I want to paint the figure maybe with the staining watercolors and maybe the background with the regular ones when I want to do maybe a cloudy sky where I have to rub off individual parts of it or I don't know stones. On this painting actually I decided to paint everything with the staining watercolors because I was curious how it would work out and I feel very comfortable with this technique. By the way do you recognize the painting here? This is the image that you all selected in my poll in my last YouTube video. As you can see, it looks vastly different from the original AI reference, as I always add my own style elements and ideas to my reference. And I'm so happy how this turned out. I named this painting Anthea's Chalice, which is inspired by the Taroka Queen of Cups. She will be up for bidding at the Bad Apple Artist Auction this Friday. And I will upload the full painting process on my Patreon page, so you can see how I work with staining watercolors. I've added many new videos to my Patreon page about gouache and watercolor techniques, materials and step-by-step -step tutorials, and many progress videos, totaling over 200 painting videos. If you want to learn more, you can also find a link to my Patreon page in the video description. I hope you found this video informative and the watercolors as exciting as I did and I look forward to see you in the next video. Bye bye!